Today's episode of the Ringer NBA show is brought to you by Google Pixel Unleash, the most powerful pixel ever on the network chosen by Google, Verizon. Pixel 3 has more than just any camera. It takes group selfies, snaps in portrait mode, and helps you always pick the perfect moment with Top Shot, which automatically recommends the best pics where no one is blinking and everything looks just right. And the Pixel 3 also has the power of Google Lens, which means you can search what you see. And when you get the Pixel 3 on Verizon, it comes with America's best network. Visit your local Verizon store today or learn more at po.st slash the ringer. Basketball is very good. Anthony Davis will win the MVP this year. The Hawks trading Doncic was a smart move. What if the Cavs are better without LeBron? Basketball is very good. Hello and welcome to the Ringer NBA show. It's group chat. I am Chris Ryan. I am joined by Haley O'Shaughnessy. Thank you. Finally. Yeah, finally the actual proper Celtic pronunciation. Justin Verrier. <laughs> that was uh, a little <laughs> underwhelming. That's just like, you just, what do you want? You're just like a wasp from Connecticut, I man. Want, I, want you, I want you to be you. <laughs> <laughs> Paolo Ugetti, what's up, man? What's up? Uh, today we're going to talk about fun. Because the NBA is pretty fun right now. But can you be too fun? Oh my God. Mm. Wow. Uh, it, no, seriously. Are we going to get a stomach ache from all the candy? That's the question. It's almost mm. Halloween. And I'm just wondering, you know, there's a lot of Skittles <laughs> in this bag right now. <laughs> and people are scoring, teams are scoring 130 points a night routinely. The numbers are gaudy. The defense is non-existent. People are having a great time. Is this sport bending towards our demand for it to be entertainment? Discuss. First of all, I want to say that the team that we all said this about last year other than the Warriors, was the Rockets. Mm-hmm. Sure. I didn't find them entertaining. And the Rockets year. are Mm-mm. beep this season so far. <laughs> wow. Okay? Okay. Self-beep. So, yeah. I mean, I don't think that you have a case at all. No, my, it's not a case. <laughs> it's a discussion topic. <laughs> 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 okay. right, let's case. end the pod. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not with Lieutenant Daniel Caffey. I'm just saying. Like, <laughs> well, if anything, it seems like what the league is trying to do is veer away from a team like the Rockets and veer more toward a team like the Warriors mm-hmm. to promote mm-hmm. ball movement and obviously deep shooting threes. I mean, we all seem to enjoy Steph Curry. Last night was a prime example of that. When We're going to talk about that. He was just jacking at, at the end of that third quarter just to see if like it would yeah, go in. Yeah. It was like closer to half court than three-point line at a certain point. And if we all agree that's fun and that the leagues are shaped in order to make more of that happen, then I'm having a good time. Yeah, I mean, look, Warriors beat the Wizards 144-122 on a random Wednesday in October. And I feel like we had like... With, with all due respect to Kevin Durant, who's <laughs> one of the best basketball players I've ever seen in my life, we got our Warriors back. When you get a yes. night like that, and and Steph is chucking like that, and they're playing the way that that they had some plays last night where I was just like, I don't feel like I've seen this kind of like, you know, high screen. Draymond gets the ball, and three guys dive to the hoop, and he just kind of like throws it up in the air. It just seemed like there was a certain effervescence to the way they were playing. They knew they had the W. It was really about the style in which they were going to do it. Here's what I'll say from from my perspective: like I wasn't planning to necessarily go out of my way to watch Wizards Warriors. We as an editorial team, we're not necessarily <laughs> planning that. Yeah. There you go. So it's it's one of the few things that feels must watch. There were a lot of interesting storylines going into the season, the Lakers, the Raptors, mm-hmm. the Wolves, but nothing quite feels the way Steph feels when he gets going. And that's so unique that I don't even know if it's so much that the league is heading that way. It's just that like we are like living through an age where we have a like, transcendent player. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it was it was almost like going back to like how this all started. It was going back to like watching how this modern, this this contemporary NBA was birthed. It's like seeing all those shooters on the floor. I think KD was six for six from three, maybe. I can't, I don't know the numbers in front of me, but he he was talking after the game where he was like, we were all encouraging Steph to shoot. And then they were like, well, you you had six. And he was like, it's, it's easy. If, yeah. if he's doing that, the gravity of the floor, the geometry of the floor is completely altered. Yeah, and I think you hit on something that like might... Uh, symbolize just the extremes that we're getting at is that everybody is rushing now to cover the three-point line, mm-hmm. thus leaving open the rim. And especially as we're getting toward the point where like guys like Brooke Lopez are essentially playing center and they're stretched all the way out to the three-point line and there's no longer any rim protection, you get sort of situations where guys can go scot-free to the rim. Oh, yeah. And so I think that's the tension right there. We want to see three-pointers, we want to see points, but at the same time, we're getting to the point where anyone over... Six nine, six ten can't really hang on the floor because they'll just get pulled out even farther, and then someone will just drive right by them and get a layup. I don't know if we want to see that as much. That's 
that's a good point. I mean, there was a couple times actually during Atlanta, Dallas, where I was like, the, the guys like Dennis Smith Jr. had uncontested, unguarded looks like standing underneath the hoop. It was almost like cherry picking in a half court offense mm-hmm. because they had four out anyway. And then one guy would drift in and, and Luca would find him and it would just be like, oh, there's nobody there. And they're not really playing a center. So mm-hmm. it's not like there's anybody there rim protecting anyway. I don't have a problem with it. It's just a different version of basketball. Well, but that's the thing is that there's always going to be a team with a player like, for example, like the Heat, they have a very traditional center. When you face them, you still have to go through that defense. Sure. Mm-hmm. So there's always going to be some team that will counter it like that. And eventually, I mean, this is when you talk to like coaches and scouts in the league, they're like, yeah, it's very important now for like these traditional, like very built muscular big men to like develop some kind of shooting mm-hmm. game. But you're always going to need them because the game eventually moves backwards. Yeah, I think they're going to have to be able to play in space. That's what right. you wanted from all of your big men coming out of the draft this year. Jaron Jackson, everyone thought would be would have an instant impact simply because he could play one through five. Mm-hmm. Whereas DeAndre Ayton has shown early on that he can hang. But the counting stats are good, but the, they don't. Right. They're not making a huge difference. Right. And what did they give up to the Lakers last night? I think they lost like by one thirty. Yeah, yeah. one thirty something. One and, of the most interesting cases of that, I think, is Bagley mm-hmm. because he's very much yeah. like he would have been really, really great. Five years ago. Yeah, he would have been Larry Johnson. And now his fit is kind of confusing. Do you think that there's like some really good NBA writer out there who like six years ago sold a like Roy Hibbert verticality book? (laughs) (laughs) I don't think it's selling me. And and it's now just like waiting for it to come back around. Oh my gosh. It's kind of crazy to just see though like the volume. Like we're talking about the Warriors and stuff, but they shot only 33 threes last night. And I say only... But if you go look at the Mavs and the Hawks game, mm-hmm. they both shot in the 40s, like in terms of three counts. So it's, Attempts, yeah. yeah, it's 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 like seeping into the league so deeply. Like these teams that are like now centered around these young guys like Luca and Trey, mm-hmm. like that is the game now. That 43s a night, I think the Mavs were ranked third, if I remember the last time correctly, like in terms of like three point frequency. It's the Vulgaris effect, man. <laughs> there you go. But you know what I'm saying? It's just so, it's so normal to see those numbers now. And I don't know. I mean, I'm okay with it. I just think I like, I'm. It's fun. Well, okay. So Kevin O'Connor wrote about this a little bit like when he wrote about Second Spectrum and the Clippers last week and this idea about if basketball could be adopting its own version of baseball's three true outcomes where it's like the only thing you need to do is either strike out Walker or Homer. Teams are just like, we have figured out a way that even if we don't have that personnel, guys like Kevin Hoorter or whatever can play in this league and be effective because they're capable of putting up 12 threes a night, you know? Well, so what's interesting is that last night, so the team that I think we shit on the most, beep, I, like <laughs> for not being able, or at least myself, for, for like missing threes and three-point shooters is the Wolves. Uh-huh. And last night they had a great three-point shooting. Yeah. And and they actually were really bad, like in, their, in attempting two-point field goals. And so that's kind of interesting is because like, even with the Wolves last night, I'm kind of like, what is going on? Yeah. Is this like your guys' main focus? Because I don't remember how many shot they shot either, but it, I, was, I right here. it was quite a lot. And I remember la- like the, over the summer, their big addition was Anthony they Tolliver. They attempted 33s last night. How many did Tolliver make? Tolliver made three of five. Yeah, it's just, I didn't really think that he was going to be that important to them. Yeah, Josh right. Okogie's taking four threes. Jimmy Butler took seven threes. And at one point, they were Carl playing like- Carl took five threes. Yeah, and Carl Anthony Towns has been their best three-point shooter for like- Two seasons running. Yeah. Yeah. At a certain point, it's a math problem. We've talked about this a lot. Yeah. Even like the the analytics suggest that even if you take a lot of threes, even if you're not making a high percentage of them, it's still a better percentage shot than any of those other ones. So like that's why teams are taking them in bunches. But if we look about like what's the next step? Is this just going to go to the extreme where people are t- jacking from the half court Are line? we getting up around 150, 140 a night? Right. And I think there is going to be a counter to a certain extent where we do see teams playing more through the post a little bit. If you have a five like Jaron Jackson who can play one through five on all, on defense and can like stretch out to the perimeter but can punish you in the post, mm-hmm. I think that there's still a golden opportunity. I think the Pelicans are a prime example of this. They Yes, they shoot threes. Miritich hits a bunch. But if you look at their results, as I was just doing the past couple games, their past three, they aren't shooting a ton. They aren't making a ton except for their second game against the Kings. And I think a big part of that is they, they have these guys that are able to create like easy opportunities at the rim. Yeah. Anthony Davis is an assault on the rim. Julius Randle is a downhill player that's going to hit you at the rim. Alfred Payton, Drew Holiday. And so there is this counter sort of forming yes. in the background. To, and the, and yeah. but the difference is, is pace. The yes, difference right. is, yes. is difference. number of possessions and the 
how early in shot clocks people are getting their shot off and this 14 seconds off an offensive rebound that causes another, like, you're going to attempt it faster. You're not going to go out and reset and run a whole new play. You're going to probably try to get something as quickly as possible. Yep. And that's what I think is really interesting. You know, uh, moving on to the to the Hawks and um, Mavericks game, I wanted to talk about because another element that always happens, this, is, this has been delightful this first <laughs> week of the season, is the way in which a rookie or a young player can transform a team. No single person here outside of like, of like a diehard fan, nobody in this room would have watched Mavs Hawks last October. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. we were not, this was, that, that not only was not of interest, it was actively like a bad basketball game. The gym was rocking. Shout out to Quavo uh, <laughs> and Ice Trey. But the gym, like the Atlanta stadium seemed really yeah. fun. And you've basically got three incredibly entertaining young players in Dennis Smith Jr., Luka Doncic, and, and Trey Young. And even though Trey Young didn't actually do anything until literally the last like seven minutes of the game, <laughs> it still wound up being this incredibly like refreshing, uh, you know, provocative introduction to these new players who were playing on national television. This is like, a, I think it's Luca's second national television game already. Right, what did you guys one. think of watching those games? It was, I mean, it was really fun, but I, it's so interesting that you say that because it's like, it's like appointment TV almost like the, the rookization, if you want to call it that of the, of <laughs> yeah. the league. It, it, like Luca had a great first quarter. I think he scored 12 points in six minutes. And then Trey obviously finished it at the end. And it's like this whole package of like, obviously the league selling to its customers, like, these are the guys who are next, but it's also we 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 now get these guys so early, like we go we become interested in them so early. By the time we finally see them on the big stage, it's a huge deal. Yeah. We're so ready to yeah. decide whether exactly. or not they're going to be like the thing. This I'm ready season. for Josh Okogi to just take Andrew Wiggins' job. I'm <laughs> just go. like, oh yeah, let's do it. Like, that was so, okay. So that's like the second game he's missed for a in contusion. in how long? I, there's like a stat. I'll look it up. But I he think he missed like one game in 312 or something like that. The last game he missed was in 2015. Yeah. I know that for sure. And he missed it in Toronto where he loves playing. He has great numbers in Toronto. He loves going off because he's Canadian. So I thought that was very strange. Yeah, it was suspicious. I'm not. And then like the whole, the whole Carl Anthony Towns <laughs> thing when he like took a three and it was awful. Well, and so I want to talk about himself. the Wolves in a sec. I was just, but, but like for, I mean, because there's I'm, a lot I'm of. I'm just suspicious. I'm suspicious too. We can get to it. But like with the Luca Trey stuff. You know, it's almost like having all these new TV shows where you're just like, I don't care about season four of Better Call Saul because there's like six new TV shows that came out this week. And so you're watching Jaron Jackson and Luca. Yeah, I mean, it's just the first glimpse of these guys that we've spent what now a couple months just like wondering like who they are and what they're going to be. And especially this trade that got made on draft night pretty much like dominated a news cycle for weeks uh, as we waited for free agency. I just love the fact that Trey Young is a thing. Simply yeah. because, like, for a while, it was just, like, clearly the Hawks are terrible. But, and it was almost set up as this binary where it was, like, Luka is going to be great and Trey Young thus has to be terrible. Yes. Mm-hmm. When it come, and when it comes down to it, it's, like, both are pretty good. Yeah. So, I don't know what Trey Young's future is in the league. I don't know if he'll ever be Steph. But I think there's a place for him if he could shoot like that and and at least, like, be feisty. And he defense. also, he has those first few seasons where he's going to be able to take the beating that he's obviously taking. I think he went right. to the line, like, 13 yeah, shots. Yeah, I was going to say, line. I thought it was promising that he went to the line so many Cause times. Because you can save a game that way. Yeah, exactly. You know? Like, and, he had one and, and, bank shot 35-footer and was pretty much quiet. He had, like, a really good spin cycle move on somebody. But, like, for the most part, he got... He got the Hawks. He kept the Hawks in the game from the strike. Right. Yeah. And, and then, obviously that's a lot to do with his passing as well, which it has been like is like the underrated skill that he has. A hundred percent. Yeah. And it, it was interesting watching him in comparison to Luca because they're just so different types of yeah. players. Yeah. It looks like Trey just like drank a bunch of coffee right before he went on the floor. <laughs> everything for Trey is like it, it comes hard, and everything <laughs> Luca seems to come easy. Like yeah. he's just yeah. like I can see over everybody. I play at the tempo I want to play at. It seems like almost basketball and the lack of hand checking and maybe all this crazy offense suits. Luka Luca's game, right? You know, he doesn't have to be like hyper physical in defense and offense. It's like he's not absorbing a ton of contact. He's like all the things that people were worried about with Luca, with his athleticism and his body, is like kind of besides the point because he has his brain. Those are two like the most lovable like NBA characters, though. Yeah, the like scrappy underdog who has like gives so much exertion every game, and then the guy who like transcends like effort and yeah. Yeah, can just mm-hmm. naturally do it. For he's sure. not even like trimming his beard at this point. No. He's like a full the neck beard, beard is going <laughs> off and he just doesn't it's care. It's a look. I love it. Um, let's talk about the Wolves and the Raptors. Um, so this is these are a tale of two franchises for sure. I mean, the Raptors mm. made... I guess you... I mean, at this point, it's sort of ridiculous to even call it like a risky decision because it's just 
it, it, in what the trade or in the, the, the coaching? DeRozan trade? Yeah, oh. I mean, and 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 getting rid of the coach of the year. I mean, they they are Nick Nurse. Nick Nurse institutes, I guess, a a more modern offense. Although I I would mention that that Detroit seems pretty modern when right. I was watching them against the Sixers and Blake was essentially running point. But Toronto has no flaws right now. Like they just everything that they're doing, they can play slow, they can play f- fast, young, experienced. Their defense is Deep. phenomenal. Yeah, and and they have a, a number one scorer who can also guard the best player on the other team. And it just seems to have made Kyle Lowry 5% better. It seems to have made fi- Fred Van Vliet 5%. Everybody around Kawhi. You're starting to like hear Serge Ibaka's name again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was like, oh, I remember that yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then when you actually go through that roster and you see all those guys playing, you're like, they have 11 guys. Yeah. Right. Like they can sustain this through three injuries. They can sustain, I mean, not to Kawhi necessarily, but they they are deep. And Valanchunas is coming off the bench. I saw our buddy Adam Naiman, who writes film uh, criticism for The Ringer, like was talking about how he can't believe how how the guys on the team seem to have obviously accepted new roles mm-hmm. because they're just like, well, we're, we're undefeated. This is great. We're, we're, we're really kicking ass. Yeah, on paper, it seemed like it made way more sense than even what the team they had last year because mm-hmm. it was just like Kawhi makes them better in in ways that like essentially just covered up DeRozan's flaws. And the one issue that we thought about was that how would this happen so quickly? Like, we, I couldn't think of another player who was in the MVP conversation that got traded and instantly had that impact. The closest thing I came up with was Charles Barkley. Like, all these other recent examples have essentially flubbed. You look at Paul George, you look at Dwight Howard with the Lakers, but it just seems like everyone has adopted, as you were saying, Kawhi is like the go-to guy, and everything falls in line in part of that, and they're just a better team as a result of that. I just love that Kawhi's back in my life. Like, it, <laughs> just watching him on the court play, like, do these freakish plays. Like, he had the steal last night where he wasn't even looking at the passer, oh, yeah. and he just stretched out his hands and he knew where the ball was going to be. Like, who, nobody else makes that kind of play. It's just, it's so much fun to watch him. And I think, you know, knock on wood, hopefully he stays healthy. And if he does, like, I don't know, I don't see why this team shouldn't win the East. You know, like, I just I just think that they're, they're like you said, they're so deep. And maybe Justin disagrees with that. Uh, no, I'm reluctant to agree. But I, I at this point, they are the best. You're team. reluctant right. to agree because of what you saw from Boston last year? Yeah, just because I feel like they have more talent. They have, they have like, they go six deep with uh, potential all stars, essentially. Yeah, sure. uh, and then I also wonder, like, who stops Giannis on this team if Kawhi is like even 90% right. of who he is, and especially the way Middleton's playing. And they're but playing you can a lot, throw a lot of bodies at Giannis. That's the thing that they do have, is they do have OG, they do have Siakam, they do have Kawhi. They can throw a couple of different looks at him. Yeah. It's interesting that we haven't even mentioned the Sixers in this. It's okay. <laughs> I mean, do you want to talk about the Sixers? No, but I just as think being that- fun is that what you mean? Because they're they're like they are a second season show now. They're like a third season TV show. We're like, oh yeah, Joel, yeah, saying it's he so has funny, real estate in Andre's so head and Markel and Ben Simmons and thanks for the shout out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Haley wrote a piece about Joel Embiid having real estate yeah. in Andre Drummond's head. It's um, really good. No, I just think that that's interesting because entering the season, I think that my question was. Okay, was it going to be the Sixers or the Celtics that was going to like mm-hmm. take like Cleveland's hold as number one? And now it just seems like it's. I mean, yes, we're like a week in, but it seems like it's going to be rotating until the end of the season, which is exciting because right. it's more like the West. Yeah, like they was, have the most like top heavy talent that they've had in such a long time, and, and these that's teams funny feel because so new, right? Like, yeah, and and they all seem so new, and that's funny because LeBron's not there anymore. I think I th- also think the Bucks are in that mix. For oh, that, for yeah, that top definitely. spot. Because, Bucks, like, so, just yeah, they look Celtics. so much more... Pistons. De- <laughs> <laughs> You're laughing, Led but like, they're pretty good. No, yeah, they're good. You're right. Blake is kind of amazing. When yeah. He's yeah. And it was nice to see that again. It Toronto, was. Milwaukee, Detroit, quietly, Indiana, uh, got a plus eight point two. I mean, it's a point differential. doesn't matter at this point, but they're, like, solid team. What about the Wizards? The Wizards are trash. Uh, <laughs> the Wizards are one and three. They're, they also have, like, an impossible... Like, they're just... To Bradley have to Beal go play good. in Golden That's State it. like in the yeah. first week of the season sucks. Also, um, speaking of LeBron, has anyone seen the Cavs point differential oof. lately? It is minus 14.5. <laughs> <laughs> it's not good. Um, um, that actually, I, I want to talk about that for a second. So let's take a quick break to hear from our sponsors because I have a follow-up question for this. So we'll be right back and we're going to talk a little bit about the Cavs, but also we're going to talk a little bit about buyers and sellers. Today's episode of the Ringer NBA show is brought to you by 99designs. 99designs is a global creative platform that makes it easy for designers and clients to work together. 
From logos to apps and packaging to books, 99designs is the go-to design resource for any budget. Use their designer search tool to work directly with one designer based on design category or industry specialization, style, skill level, availability, and more. Or you can start a contest, invite the entire community to take a shot at your project, then pick your favorite. We are thrilled to announce we have partners up with 99designs to roll out new Ringer merchandise, but we need your help. Designers have submitted their best designs for New Ringer t-shirts, and we want you all to pick the winner. To do so, check out the merch designs at 99designs.com slash NBA. And right now you can receive a free $99 upgrade on your first design contest. To get your free upgrade, visit 99designs.com slash NBA. That's 99, the number 99, designs.com slash NBA. 99designs, where creativity meets possibility. Today's episode of the Ringer NBA show is brought to you by Simply Safe. Here's why I am a big fan of Simply Safe home security. Simply Safe is ready for anything that gets thrown at it. If a storm takes out your power, Simply Safe is ready. If an intruder cuts your phone line, Simply Safe is ready. Say they destroy your keypad or siren, Simply Safe will still get you the help you need. Here's what I love about this maybe it's overkill. Maybe you don't need to be ready for every worst case scenario, but Simply Safe is always ready just in case. That's what makes it great. Now, Simply Safe could cost an arm and a leg. It should, but it doesn't. And that's because they're good people. They charge you what's fair, what's right. $14.99 a month, no contracts, no hidden fees. I recommend Simply Safe to everyone I know. You've got to check it out. Go to simplysafe.com slash NBA. That's simplysafe.com slash NBA. All right, we're back. Uh, Ringer NBA show group chat. Paolo, Haley, Justin, Chris. Um, Justin brought up the Cavs right before we went to break, and they're minus 14 point differential. And uh, for as trash as they are, they have a lot of interesting pieces that could be used here. Mm, yes. Um, like if I were them, I would nail everything but SETI and Colin Sexton would have a for sale sign on it, including Ty Lue. <laughs> <laughs> but like in terms of like if if you want to get into like I mean Ty Lue going to the Lakers to replace Luke Walton will not happen just Oof. I know that Ty Lue probably does not want that in his life anymore but you know I think that they are a very interesting position right now because they have a lot of veteran pieces that a team making a playoff run like the Sixers like the Pacers like Detroit like a bunch of Western Conference teams might be interested in any number of their of their guys, mm. like a Corver, like a Kevin Love, like a J.R. Smith, like whoever. This is just, it's not fair at all what we do to Ty Lu. It's really not because he's put in the two most extreme positions that you can be as a coach. Dealing with a superstar who, I mean, I don't, I'm not in these huddles, but is not coached. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he like he knows enough so that it's more like you're working together instead of like the hierarchy as normal. So you're saying bring the Lakers legend home? No, what I'm saying is <laughs> it's just not fair because we can't really you can't really judge him completely as a coach off that and then you and then all of a sudden he has a freaking terrible team. He has a shell of a team with what Kevin Love? I mean, but Kevin Love is still we I I expected them to be in the mix for I mean, not maybe not a playoff spot, but like just just to be semi competitive. Like they, they could be yeah, East, exactly. Right? Yeah, because like they still like Chris is saying they have pieces. But like I think, we, I think we, I think we, I think we overrated those pieces a lot because those pieces were playing around LeBron. Sure, and I'll tell that's you what, totally fair. This is a team that has not quite adapted to the new NBA. They got cooked by Brooklyn and Atlanta, and you know you're not seeing a team that can play this kind of five out. Let's run. Right. Let's shoot basketball. Like they're trying to get Kevin Love looks kind of like Minnesota looks exactly. And Kevin Love is their. Carl Anthony Towns, just in terms of like their best three point shooter, might be like right. their most important guy to have inside well, as uh -huh. well. If you look at the box score, they only shot 18 threes last night. Obviously, we were talking earlier about King shooting 40. That in today's NBA. And you Jordan Clarkson that. took four and missed all of them. And <laughs> Kyle Korver played 19 minutes and took only and took no threes. So uh, what what are, what are we doing? That's such a good point. I actually forgot all about Kyle Corbett. That's, <laughs> yeah, exactly. that's another guy that they could totally, totally talk another team into trading for something major. Exactly. Especially later on when a team that maybe desperately needs a three-point shooter like is heading Th into a playoff Thunder, spot. Maybe. Yeah. I'll tell you what. The Thunder are not unlike it in the same situation. They're, they're not unlike the Cavs. They are also 0-3. They're Point differential is minus eleven point seven. Mm. Wondering and what's going to go on with their offense. They're not is scary. built to play this five right. out basketball. Yeah, they don't have sh they don't have enough shooters. Like Paul George is their best shooter, and that's not like 
that's not great because they don't really have like a knockdown shooter because that's George fine, but he's just not. Yeah, he's doing things. too much. Exactly. Uh, yeah, you need more support around him. Yeah. So Kevin Love to the Thunder. Sure. But would that help? Uh, I think it would. Uh, obviously, I think they're going to have more struggles defensively because Love is going to hurt you on that end. But I think they have enough plus defenders that they can cover them up. And as we've seen, their biggest issue is just like finding some sense of spacing. Patrick well, Patterson is just... I think the biggest issue is they have no, nobody to trade for Kevin Love. Well, then that's <laughs> unless, you wanna, unless you want to get off of Adams. Like, unless, unless, I mean, right. yeah. But to your point, like, no. isn't that what, wouldn't you rather have a Kevin Love and be way tougher on offense now after what we've seen this first week than be able like think about defense first what do you think the plan is in Oklahoma do you think that they're just like we got a bunch of guys and let's hope that it slows down a little bit yeah I think they they probably think that it works and I think that was best represented by what they did this offseason and essentially just bringing all of their ancillary guys back along with Paul George I think that there's still a case to be made that it could but as you've seen like I think everyone needs to be healthy and I think they need to figure some stuff out in that front court to to really kind of make it work I still believe in their defense uh, I still think like even if Roberson isn't there, there'll be a above average defense. But I don't know. They're they're really working with a slim margin of error, and you wouldn't expect that for a team with like two all stars. They do have a slim margin of error, but I also have a hard time saying that their off season that they could have done any more. Mm-hmm. I mean, they they yeah. really did bring in the most necessary thing, which I think was a backup for Russ, and they right. brought in like a great backup, this guy who used to start, you know, and like the biggest issue with him. That everyone said is like, well, maybe him and Russ will bump heads. Yeah, but I mean, that's seriously what he's needed for so long. And then they brought in that gr- they brought in a group of guys who could go either way. Nerlens yeah, Noel, maybe Nerlens will be per. Yeah, you know, <laughs> that's my favorite small sample size stat so far. <laughs> <laughs> is Nerlens uh, being the best player on the Thunder? Um, so the Thunder, the Cavs, I, I think you could put Washington in this group of go- of teams that could could do some midseason. Hey. Whatever you guys, it's nothing's nailed down here. If you guys see something you like, make the best offer. Let's get some draft picks in here. I wouldn't be surprised. Is there anybody else that you see that that you feel that way about? Mm. Um, on the Cavs. I mean, no. I mean, like I, I other guess, NBA teams that you're like, this is not going well, and we're willing to like trade whatever. We, I think it's going to go like well for the Hornets overall, but I think the Kemba being like relatively. Yeah, I mean, what? yeah. In, in this, in, 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 <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> What do you mean? What was that so passionate what about? What do you mean Hornets? it's going well? Don't be no, smart like, the Hornets. They're, they they're two easy, and three. They can easily get the eight seed, and that's probably fine for that. Right. That's Malik not Monk fine. looks good. That's not fine. Okay, it's not fine. But Hold so, yourself to a better standard, Pablo. <laughs> Damn the it. Hornets are the Hornets for the last, like, I don't even know how many seasons. When I think about them, I yawn. Ooh. Even with Malik even Monk with back? Kemba? <laughs> That's the thing. It's like it sucks. I want. I've wanted Kemba to get out of there for so long. Well, then there you go. Long. That's that's my point. Is like it, I guess if it goes downhill there, you could you could think about shipping Ken, Kemba off to to a better to a team that needs him. Like do the do Lakers that because need he's him? put in so much for them. He deserves better. Hornet for life, baby. <laughs> um, probably the Heat. Interesting. I'd say the Heat. Yeah. I don't think the Blazers will do it, but I wish that they would. Although who knows? Because they're always they're always. Good in the regular What's season. Success? And then, it's just it's yeah. about sure. what success is for your team. And they're kind of like where the Clippers were a couple of years ago, where they're like, "You guys, we have everything. Yeah, we're just gonna try it again in the postseason because why wouldn't we? We have right. everything, and it right. just never works out." Listen, Ennis Cantor, <laughs> Tim Hardaway Jr., they're yeah. available. Come get them. <laughs> make it happen. <laughs> and it's just a sweet, sweet contract. Um, let's talk about the Lakers, and we can wrap it up there. Gonz was writing wrote something earlier this week about not the panic button, but just basically this idea that the Lakers are. Are losing now to win later. That they're 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 working out the kinks and and that it's a different kind of rough start for LeBron because unlike those Cleveland teams, this is actually pretty fun to watch because of the personalities involved and also the style of play. Agree or disagree? Yes, and probably because there's just more interest in the team because of the Lakers and mm-hmm. they have LeBron. It's like that's definitely like the glass half full outlook. But at the same time, if you do look at the teams that they played, they've been. Good teams and they've hung with them. Yeah. And then they beat the, the team they beat. Sucks. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And the team they use is the one they're supposed to be to be like in the mix for a playoff spot in, in the West. So, yeah, I mean, it's, I, I don't think there's reason to overact either way. I guess holding Phoenix to 113 is a stingy defensive effort. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, we got to recalibrate Danny. how we think about I think that. It's like the bad boy Pistons. <laughs> 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 the Lakers will have a rotating arsenal of excuses that they will be able Mm -hmm. to use. Mm -hmm. And that will get them through a lot of the season. And I think that that's fine. So right now, obviously, it's Ingram being suspended. And and Rondo being suspended, yeah. But 
it's all then it can be the young guys, you know, and then it can be like, well, what are we going to do at center? And then it can be rotations. Yeah. It's going to like until it's going to take them a while or us a while to be like, okay, well, maybe like if they're still losing like this in December. I mean, not like this, I think but if they're depends, still losing yeah. quite a, quite a bit of games. It depends what teams around them are doing. It depends on what kind of separation we're seeing in the Western Conference. Are we going to have like two or three teams to that are really, really good and then everybody's bunched together like we kind of did last year with like three through eight being separated right. by just a couple of games? I yeah. think that they will be in that mix, but towards the bottom of it. Interesting. I mean, we saw this, go- we talked about this going into the season. It's just all of their core players are essentially young players. Mm-hmm. And those guys still have to play through mistakes. Even a guy like Josh Hart, who's already supplanted KCP, uh, yeah. KCP in the starting lineup, it, like he's still in his second year. Mm-hmm. And like Brandon and he was Ingram the only one year. who made more than one three last night. Yeah. yeah. He four, he was four for six. He was plus 21. I mean, you've, you've written about Hart. Mm-hmm. Do you think he's more effective as a starter? That's an interesting question. I was Is thinking something about, about was, his personality. Yeah, I was that, thinking about that last night because I wondered if he's almost kind of used to being that for forgotten Nova. guy and, and and that kind of like oh. role player oh, guy. Yeah, yeah. Just just having that role of like, all right, I'm gonna come in and like make the impact that like I think I can make. Mm-hmm. But in this like role of like unex- almost unexpected. Yeah, if you will. Guy yeah exactly. Yeah. Um I, I think he looked good last night, but but yeah, maybe in in the future, like I mean a bigger point to all of this is just Luke's rotation and, and how they shift on a game to game basis. But I do think it would it would be interesting to see if Hart at some point goes back to the bench just and ends up playing still more minutes than KCP. It just has a different kind of like feel for him. Okay. Right. I am I am interested, like we were saying with the rookies earlier when we were talking about Mavs Hawks. That is interesting because last night when I was thinking about Hart, I was thinking another fun thing with this Lakers team is seeing which guys will emerge to take those kind of spots. Sure. Mm-hmm. Because Hart seems very obviously to be somebody that was discounted and as like and he shouldn't be. On like his role with the, these Lakers. Well, yeah. he, he can just do like a lot of little things really well, and I think that fits well for a player to play around LeBron. I think the interesting thing too is like we're talking about the rookies making impact, like Luca and mm-hmm. and Trey, but the Lakers don't really have that right now too. Like they obviously they had a late round pick, right? They they drafted Mo, and he's been out with an injury, but even like they took a chance on Svi, mm-hmm. but he's probably going to have to go to the G League and in a few of these guys. You know what I'm saying? So they don't like even if he was like their theoretical like off the bench shooter kind of guy like it doesn't look like he he can be that right now which sure. is was something that they might need you know just somebody who can go in there and hit shots what is on their bench if you take hard away from there you, you're basically running the offense through Lance Stevenson and as, as we saw last night it worked but it's essentially a dust no, I mean like I think time. we've all been through that that wash cycle before <laughs> <I'm> like <laughs> yeah. you know oh my god Lance Stevenson has triple double oh my god Lance Stevenson like threw the ball into the rafters in crunch time or something you know right. it's like that you live by it, you die by it. We'd be foolish to think that Lance Stevenson would be anything than what he's proven to be. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I, have, I was just going to say, when you were set talking about this being them working out the kinks and us forgiving them for that, Dan Tony said something really interesting last night that kind of put me off. He said, we just have to hang in there for a little bit and go through some growing pains. Mm-hmm. What growing pains? They're all old, is what you're saying? I mean, this they is- lost two of the guys that like made everything work in a reason in Bamute, and they brought in a guy who is bad at basketball now. <laughs> he scored 22 points last That doesn't mean anything in this NBA. I mean, 22 points is like a splash in the bucket for the Rockets. They should it? not be a team after signing Chris Paul to this long contract that they're going to hate in two years who has growing pains. Talk about it. <laughs> Talk about it. You Let think, me go ISO ball. I have a captive. You're a captive audience. If you're talking just, about hating on the Rockets, I, yeah. I know. I just think that that is not a valid excuse. I don't know what they mean. Growing pains. I think you're going to be you're, fine. I, I just your three most throw. important players are the same. Well, James I, Harden, Chris Paul, Clint Capella. Sure. I, I think it's both things. I think you're right, but they need growing pains to work in some of the guys who are clearly not up to the level of the guys who were before. And obviously, if they're going to switch as much as they do and the Rockets switch more than anybody on defense, I think that takes a level of communication where you need to be able to trust James Ennis will be able to cover P.J. Tucker in ways that Mm -hmm. uh, Trevor Ariza used to because they're used to playing together. I I get what he's saying, but at the same time, I think you're right that they should be a little bit worried because I don't know if any of the solutions that they've tried have worked and will work. Well, and then... I, I completely understand that. And I get what you're saying about losing the defensive pieces. But it, let's not, not act like they haven't had issues on offense, too. And I think that's what's so confusing. Yeah, to me I mean, they, they, Harden could be, is probably a little injured and playing through a hamstring. Mm-hmm. But like, look, 
we're talking about like who started all this like fun electric basketball and pouring it in and the three true outcomes basketball. I mean, it's Maury. And Maury's playing a really like a pretty high, high wire act right now because he's starting Michael Carter Williams. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like this team is old on the older side in some places, in some very important places. And guys like Harden and Paul are coming up. I mean, it's Harden, especially with his MVP season last year played like a guy playing for an MVP trophy. So he played a lot of games and a lot of minutes and did a, had a lot of usage. And it might come back to bite them a little bit this season. It reminds me a lot of the late era Miami Heat big three, team t- big three teams. That's a great comparison. Just because you build your team around three giant contracts and they essentially have that now with Paul Harden and now Clint Capella. And then you, you also have the money you're paying to Tucker. It, you, it leaves you with so few options to fill out the other spots. And if you're not going to want to go deep into the luxury tax, as it seemed mm-hmm. like they weren't willing to do this offseason and pay guys like Ariza and, and Bamute, uh, you're just really hoping for flyers and guys that you just bring into your system and kind of coach up. And so far, that hasn't worked. I will say I am curious to see what happens with Marquise Chris. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He's a guy that like everyone assumed maybe you get him into that system and all of a sudden he's catching lobs from Chris Paul and that sparks something. But again, he's not going to help your defense and yeah. that's you, where their biggest issue do is. Do you know who had um, who played 39 minutes, uh, took 17 shots last night, it was a minus five off the bench? Carmelo. <laughs> <laughs> but that's he, also not good. He did score a lot to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, look, they help sometimes. They, this is they, they are the bad side of what we're talking about. They, they, they were 11 for 40 from three last night. That's just, you're going to... Often you will lose a basketball game when you're shooting that high volume of shots from three and missing. You're only hitting 27%. On the other hand, I do want to talk a little bit about the Jazz just because it was, it's was. it been a slower start relative to some of the absolutely explosive starts we've seen around the league. And we already had a Donovan Mitchell, Quinn Snyder one-on-one to talk about how he'd been doing earlier this season. And he fucking cooked these guys last mm-hmm. night. Yeah. 38 points, 14 for 25 from the field, four threes, uh, five boards and seven assists. Go ISO ball. <laughs> On what? On your boy. <laughs> I don't even know what to say anymore. Like, well, what? I mean, wow. like uh, this is a huge season for him. It is a huge season for are him. Are you Dwayne Wade? You know, it's like what are what like what are, do you, are you the guy? Let's let's see it. I think that all of us are pretty. Don't all of us assume that he's going to have like another step this year and be like a little bit more solid than he was last year? Well. I, I thought that he might have a little bit of a come down simply because a lot of the shots he was taking and what he's asked to do on the offense, uh, it seemed like a lot for someone who wasn't necessarily a t- like a super efficient player last year. But yeah, he I, started off really bad from the three. Yeah, last mm-hmm. yeah. And so we'll see what happens going forward. But I just, I mean, Quinn Snyder's offense is just so precise. It's basically a machine. And that's why when everybody was saying all these things in the preseason, like, no, they can't live up to what they were at the end of last regular season. I was just like, they've gotten better in every way from that team that they were last year. They brought back everybody, and then they had Exum. They had another year of Jay Crowder, who everyone wants to bag on because he was so bad in Cleveland, but is actually like a an okay defensive four right? in, mm-hmm. in order to try to like chase down some of these offensive fours. I just, I love their team, and I would like to point out that in our takes post leading into the season, <laughs> I predicted that they would be number two in the West. So I'm just going to throw wow, that out there. there. You go. That's a lot. In, in, That's in, a lot. In, 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 I don't know if I'd be like proudly showing that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, let's see what that in yeah. the season. Um, uh, yeah, I just, I think Utah's really interesting just because he's such a volume shooter that if he is, and he said, I'm, I was in my head for the first few games, and he had like some seven for 25 nights, and that's you're gonna you're gonna live by it, you're gonna die by it. You I know, mean, that was his story last year, though. Yeah, but no, it was just was that he was a rookie, it. and yeah. so yeah, and so it was amazing. I do think he'll be the same. I just think he'll be more consistent this season. Yeah. Um. Let's bring it all full circle and let's talk about the other side of these high scoring games and a little bit about how Vegas is reacting to it. Uh. So I tweeted Monday mm-hmm. that the lesson from the NBA so far was just take the over Smash on everything. Over. Yeah. But Vegas has already hit. So what does that mean? It means that they are, they've already Course set corrected. the line. Yeah. On Tuesday. So everybody knows we're talking about like, you know, the combined score of the two teams in a game. That's the over. Like, yes. 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 Right. So on Tuesday, two of them hit. And then I, lo- I checked last night because there were so many high scoring games. Mm-hmm. I thought, okay, I'm wondering like how many turned out and only two of the overs so they've kind of already adjusted to this being a league-wide trend. Yeah, I mean, obviously the Wizards um, Golden State game wasn't over, and then the Bucks game uh, barely was by two points. But everything else was an under: hmm. Cavs, Knicks, Wolves, Hornets, Rockets, Pacers. Yeah, so I mean, 
I guess even I take Rockets it back. Jazz. Because that, because I mean, the, the Jazz held the Rockets to eighty nine points, which I thought was notable. Yeah, they thought that that was me two eighteen. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's the Rockets, you know. Yeah. That's like what we were talking about earlier. Everyone of all these teams, the Rockets are usually that team that's like scoring way above. Do you? I mean, the rest of the league. Do you? Do you feel like does that, does Vegas adjust like this? Like, do you think Vegas knows something that we don't hear, or is there like an, a massive like overreaction going on? Like, what do you think you can derive from this? Uh, that Vegas knows something that we don't? Is that your question? No, I think that Vegas just <laughs> watches very closely and they were like, huh, that's weird. Yeah. Everyone's, yeah. So Everybody's no, shooting just, threes. Nobody's really playing defense yet. And yes. they're not calling it. They're, they're allowing guys to- Freedom of movement. Yeah, and they're giving a lot of freedom I've already movement. heard yes. that phrase like 20 times. It's like been like one week. <laughs> All right. Well, you keep us up to date. I would on take trends. some unexpected overs. You would take unexpected overs. Yes. Like, look, look at tonight. What do you think it would be? Okay, let's look. Gonna fill in time here and say Kevin Love was just uh, just said he's out he's out for tonight with left foot soreness. So I think the tank is getting an early start. You think Cle- that Cleveland's <laughs> tanking now? <laughs> Do Cleveland no, have not, their I'm pick not, this I'm year? Not, um, I'm I not being serious. Think if it's but, but in he the is top ten. Tonight. Is it? That's it's the Corvo trade, isn't it? Yeah, it's protected. I believe lottery or top ten or something. Okay, okay so Boston, Oklahoma. I don't know what the over under is, but I wouldn't take the over. No, I would not. I would no. not either. Now, Denver Lakers seems like you would. But Lakers on a back-to-back. Lakers on a back-to-back. And Denver's got a good defense. They're missing Ingram. Wow. What if Denver's <laughs> got a good defense? It's true. It's, but and I just, Denver, No, it's crazy Denver to think has about. actually failed multiple under, er, overs this season. They've, they've missed it. Yeah, because the because Vegas knows. <laughs> Vegas knows <laughs> Unless you're me, and then you know more than Vegas. Brought to you wow. by the Las Vegas Chamber of Commerce. <laughs> Haley the Greek. <laughs> Haley, Haley the Greek. The Greek. Uh, stay tuned tomorrow where we'll get another episode of The Corner 3 with Sharks, Danny, and Kevin O'Connor. We're here at least four days a week. Sources say will probably pop up one of these Wednesdays. Um, until next time, for Paolo, Justin, and Haley, I'm Chris. Basketball is very good. Basketball is very good.